perhaps we can start with a discussion of, that, of the very role of the artist in our world. How do we consider the relationship between the intrinsic value of an artist's practice versus their impact on the world? So Natalie, if I might just start with you. You mentioned on the phone that you don't necessarily consider your work as activism as you create it. Can you unpack that a little for us and share your thoughts on the relationship between your practice and its potential impact? I can try. Iwan uh, um, uh gracias for having me. I, I, so I'm, I'm a poet primarily, That's uh, so I work in, in language, I work in text. Um, I also um, work with the last speakers of my Mojave language um, to revitalize uh, the Mojave language, Makav. And so I think for me that the least of what I do happens on the page, even though to um, to my communities, my societies outside, that's what a poet is in some sense, is what they're able to produce on the page. Um, I think the way I've been taught about uh, language, about its power, is that it, it's something moving through me. Um, it's something that I can't hold still or static. And so when I think about activism, I'm often called a, a language activist because I am working with my elders so that our language will not um, be silent. And it's, it's a shame to be in a, a state where um, to speak your language is activism. Uh, so you, you begin to consider, you know, what is luxury, what is right, what it, you know, t meaning human right. Um, and so it's interesting to set art beside uh, language uh, for me. And it informs a lot of, of the ways that I work. And I think what I can do with a poem, meaning what, who I share that with, uh, what, I, what I think of how poetry can mo move in a community, that to me is a little bit more of what I consider activism, like what those gestures might be that might inspire in somebody else. Yet on the, the creative side of it, I, I feel like what I'm doing is, um, we call it a gift, but what I'm doing is asking very selfish and personal questions, and those don't feel like activism to me. Um, and I understand for every medium, you know, that's, that's a little bit different, so. Any comments? I have uh, two responses. <clears throat> the first is um, the, I don't even think I need to say the name of this Victorian. All that mankind, humankind creates that is useless is art. <laughs> Any takers on who it is? Oscar Wilde, right? Um, and I, I've always loved the idea of Oscar Wilde, but that statement always pissed me off. Right? <laughs> uh, and uh, then um, my own, Art does for me what uh, religion traditionally did. It organizes a seemingly chaotic universe. Now, is that a social function? I'm not sure, but both the, the bar should be really high. And I am, I'm, I'm concerned that I don't make an art form that could really make power that be angrier. I mean, I, for, for what, what you said innocently, my <coughs> language, uh, oh, but you're an American, right, aren't you? You, you speak English, that's, that's our language. But you're asserting, just in that statement, that you are somehow different. And I think that that's a very powerful platform. My difference has had to be like ripped out of me because I want to be, I want to make it in this room. You know? I want to make it, I want you to uh, like what I do. I want you to pay for it. And if I spend all of my time making you angry, which is what my impulse is about art that really has impulse, <laughs> impact, there's a lot, of, a lot of mediocrity in the world, right? Look at what's going on in Washington, right? Uh, so an artist, we're going to say that an artist has impact. Most of us are entertainers. I really see artists and musicians um, every day when I wake up. I think about the act of service. I think about how I serve my community how I serve my community of artists, how I serve my art form. And a huge part of that is, I, I'm a classical musician, I'm a violinist, is that this is an art form that started in Western Europe 
and yet we're sharing this art with everyone in America, but we don't represent everybody in America. And the only way for an art form to grow is that we hear the stories of other people. And I actually think it's a tragedy and a huge loss in the end if we don't hear the stories of people unlike ourselves. Mm. Um, so in that sense, I believe um, in serving communities because we have an opportunity to give voice through artistic means. And essentially, if we're being honest, um, in classical music, the majority of our audiences are of a certain color, of a certain socioeconomic class. Um, and as a performer, as a musician, I have the opportunity um, and I'm empowered to bring the stories of people of color, stories of women who are 51% of our world's population, um, who have not been represented before. And in fact, even for myself, when I was growing up, I'm American. Um, my, I come, I'm the daughter of refugees uh, from the Korean War. And there was never a single book or opera or TV show or movie that re represented any of the experiences that I had growing up as the daughter of uh, war survivors. So I always read Holocaust literature because that was the closest I could come. So being able to create um, and represent um, and being able to give to our community a story that hasn't been heard in America feels like a huge responsibility um, and a duty that I have in my art form. But maybe um, I'm still a servant. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I'm the only one who doesn't make anything on this panel. And, um, <laughs> Me too. Um, so, but I, what you were talking about, you want somebody to buy it, right? You want somebody to pay for the ticket. You want to be successful in the art that you make. You want it to be consumed, right? I want to survive. Yeah, you want to survive. And so one of the things that I think that I do as an administrator is not just to you know, say, this is the award that we're going to give out and make sure there's enough money to pay it, but to build the audience, right? Because it's like these high arts, right? Dance, classical music, poetry. Right? These are not things that everyone is trained and grown up to consume. And so it's so important from my perspective to do the work of making sure that people feel invited, that there's actually some sort of connection between the art form and something they can relate to. You can write the book that you were looking for, you know, but if you're not set up to say, I want to read books, or I feel like books are for me, you'll never connect with it. You won't find it. And so I think that's a lot of the work that we try to do, and a lot of the things that I think about. Sort of I'm not trying to make something for anyone, but I'm trying to connect the things that will help and will grow people and will grow everyone.